Could elderberry extract cause a cytokine storm in COVID-19? Extremely unlikely. I'm Dr. Chris Masterjohn. I have a PhD in nutritional sciences. I am not a medical doctor, and this is not medical advice. When I first came out with the food and supplement guide for the coronavirus, I listed elderberry at the top of the things to do to pre- to, for prevention of COVID-19. And this was based on antiviral activities towards a similar coronavirus that enters the cell in a similar way. Now, many people then ask me, could elderberry cause a cytokine storm? A cytokine storm is a storm of, uh, it is not accurate to describe it as excessive inflammation, but it is um, dysregulated immune response where some parts of the immune system are ramped up too high and others are failing and are too low. So it's not an overactive immune system. It is a dysregulated immune system. Now, the first thing we want to do is look at what is the nature of the cytokine storm that plays a role in the uh, in COVID-19 turning severe and potentially being fatal. And what we find is that it's marked by three big things. Number one, increased neutrophils. Number two, low levels of lymphocytes, especially CD4 and CD8 T cells and natural killer cells. Number three, higher levels of interleukin-6 or IL-6. Now, there's a bunch of other markers that are either, you know, some of them are results of inflammation more or results of these thing parts of the inflammatory cascade rather than causes um, such as C-reactive protein, which is released by the liver to clean up dead and dying cells, D-dimer, which is released as blood clots are broken down, and ferritin, which is a protein that helps prevent iron from feeding pathogens. And then there are others like tumor necrosis alpha or TNF-alpha, interferon gamma, um, that have either uh, fewer studies behind them or conflicting studies around them. And then there are a bunch of other cytokines that have been measured only in a very few studies. But the key markers are increased neutrophils, lower levels of CD4 and CD8 T cells, and natural killer cells, and high levels of IL-6. And uh, the most things with the most predictive value are low lymphocyte percentage, high IL-6, and a high ratio of neutrophils to CD4 and CD8 T cells. So what we want to look at when we look at does elderberry uh, increase the risk of the cytokine storm, we really want to know um, is elderberry going to worsen the neutrophils, the low CD4 and CD8 T cells and natural killer cells, and the high IL-6. That's the big thing. And so, um, I mean, first of all, we can just cut to the chase. So there's one study that went around on the internet showing that elderberry increased cytokines in isolated uh, in isolated monocytes that were taken from healthy people. And uh, monocytes are immune cells that will circulate in the blood. They are the precursors to macrophages that are found in tissues, which macrophage means big cell that eats other things. Um, so uh, in these cells, isolated from human volunteers, elderberry extract increased uh cytokines, including TNF-alpha and IL-6. But in the only study that's ever been done that was a randomized controlled trial, feeding humans 1,000 milligrams of elderberry extract every day for 12 weeks, there was no effect on IL-6 IL and TNF-alpha. In fact, um, the TNL, TNF-alpha was actually a little bit lower by the elderberry, although it wasn't statistically significant. So the one human randomized controlled trial completely refutes the uh, the study in monocytes that's been circulating. Uh, and these are very parallel. These are very analogous. Um, humans have, healthy humans have monocytes that are circulating in their blood that could release the measurable IL-6 and TNF-alpha um, 
So clearly, if the cell study shows that it does happen and the RCT shows that it doesn't, the elderberry components either are not reaching the monocytes that are in those healthy people's blood in the same way that they are in the test tube, or there are just other contextual factors that make the effect of elderberry on the monocytes irrelevant in the context of a live human. Now, with that said, there are a bunch of other cell studies in animal models that have been done for elderberry. And in general, the trend is this. Um... In COVID-19, we want neutrophils to be lower, and elderberry inactivates neutrophils in vitro. In elderberry, we don't care so much about monocytes. We do care about macrophages because these are the cells that infect the lung and seem to be the cause of all the uh, downstream inflammation. And in human monocytes, elderberry does increase inflammatory cytokines, but in macrophages, elderberry consistently decreases inflammatory cytokines, especially focusing on TNF-alpha and IL-6. And then on top of this, there are some animal studies. Obese mice have higher TNF-alpha and IL-6. Elderberry doesn't change the IL-6, but it lowers the TNF-alpha. When elderberry is given to healthy mice, it does nothing to IL-6. But when the mice are treated with a chemical that causes type 1 diabetes, IL-6 goes through the roof and elderberry cuts it in half. So basically, human RCT, elderberry does nothing to the inflammatory cytokines. It might even lower the TNF-alpha. Animal studies, if you give it to the healthy animal, does nothing. But if you create a model where the animal has high levels of IL-6 or TNF-alpha, it either does nothing or it lowers them. It doesn't increase them. Irrelevant cells like monocytes um, or, you know, less, at least less relevant cells like monocytes, elderberry does increase the cytokines, but in highly relevant cells like macrophages, it does decrease the relevant cytokines and neutrophils, which we want to be lower, elderberry inactivates them. So basically elderberry does not do any of the things to even the isolated cells that we would expect to worsen the risk of the cytokine storm in COVID-19. In vivo, it's consistently anti-inflammatory in this in this you know context and in the only human rct um, neutral anti-inflammatory if anything so extremely unlikely that elderberry is going to contribute to the cytokine storm more to the point elderberry appears to be antiviral infection with the virus and growth of the virus is the primary thing causing the cytokine storm so i do not think that elderberry is likely to cause a cytokine storm in covid19 if anything i think it would have more of a chance of decreasing the covid19 um, cytokine storm and i believe it is highly likely to be antiviral and therefore preventative uh, towards covid19 so i personally uh, would use elderberry in the same context that it's been effectively used in RCTs against the cold and flu in humans. And that means um, getting about a thousand milligrams, um, 700 to a thousand milligrams per day of elderberry extract equivalent to around 25 grams of fresh berries um, taken divided between two to four doses a day. I take mine all at once because I don't want to deal with the pain of separating it two to four times a day. Um, there are no RCTs showing that elderberry prevents COVID-19. Uh, I just believe that it is reasonable to think that it might. It seems completely safe to take it for at least 12 weeks, probably for longer than that. So it's what I'm doing now. Disclaimer, I'm not a medical doctor. This is not medical advice. I also am not an infectious disease epidemiologist, and I'm not speaking on behalf of infectious disease epidemiologists. I have a PhD in nutritional sciences, and my expertise is in conducting and interpreting research related to my field, such as elderberry. Please consult your physician before doing anything for prevention or treatment of COVID-19, and please seek the help of a physician immediately if you believe you may have COVID-19. This series is based on my free daily newsletter, COVID-19 Research Updates. As a result of the time it takes to produce a video or podcast from a newsletter I wrote up, there's a slight delay between when I publish the newsletter and when you watch or listen to this. When you subscribe to the newsletter, you get the latest of my research every single day as soon as it's ready to come out. You get references and links to the sources for all the information, and you immediately get an archive of all the past issues. You can sign up for free at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash COVID-19 updates.
It would mean the world to me if you support this service by purchasing a copy of my ebook, The Food and Supplement Guide to the Coronavirus. The guide contains my most up-to-date conclusions about what we should be doing for nutritional and herbal support on top of hygiene and social distancing for added protection. Due to the absence of randomized controlled trials testing nutritional or herbal prevention, these are my best guesses for what is likely to work without significant risk of harm based on the existing science. By purchasing the guide, you enable me to continue devoting my skills to where they are most needed and I'm genuinely, genuinely grateful for your contribution. You can purchase it at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash coronavirus. Thank you and stay safe.